Hello everybody, welcome to another Valheim video. Today, uh, I'm going to be giving you an update on the Path to Ashlands No Map No Portals playthrough that we've been running. And if you stick around to the end, you'll be able to join. I'll show you some of the projects that we've got going on and what the plans are to keep this interesting until the Ashlands finally launches. I'd noticed that there's certain seeds that you can actually connect all of the land masses in Valheim. You can have a, a single path that you travel on, because I always felt like that was something that was sort of missing from Valheim. I wanted to go on an epic journey that I could just follow down a path and fight the things I find along the way. So that's where the original inspiration came for this Path to Ashlands concept. And the idea with this server is to sort of make it as challenging and as dangerous as possible so that people play together and are actively encouraged to work on building projects. So my go-to strategy is to spawn a bunch of monsters in an unusual and challenging way in an area that's enticing to build in. Something like this here. I'll spawn a bunch of stuff and then take a screenshot and then give everybody the information they need to find the area and give them some inspiration and guidance of what to build there. This way, people can just work on these little projects together and I've found that it makes it easier to figure out what to do if you want to play cooperatively with another person. Something that Valheim is really lacking in is more guidance and fostering of the creativity of building. And building together isn't as easy as you might think it is. It is something that requires some effort and working together and coordinating. Because if you're used to just building alone, then you might get pissed off when other people build over what you're doing. And it really takes a lot to get out of that mindset and learn to just work communally and add to what other people are doing. The server starts out quite simple. The first mission was essentially to progress in the beginning area and get used to the no map, no portal, hard difficulty mode, and progress enough to be able to sail to make the migration over to the meadow that Hilda resides in. And accordingly, over time, loads of little Bronze Age buildings and huts sprung up in this starting area. People basically ended up either going one or two different directions. We can see that on this coast over here, we have a bunch of more traditional Valheim settlements. In a matter of days, tens of different bases just sprung up and people were building so much. But after some time, people were done with their black forest exploring and they were ready to perform the Great Migration. So we built up our carves at this dock without any idea how lost we were about to get. You see, most of us started right around here, in this red dock area. So we promptly got separated, and within one minute, I couldn't see a single other person, and we left with five boats. It turns out, some of us crashed into this area over here, built a base, and inevitably actually died to a troll. Some of us ended up drifting out into the ocean, I was around here wondering why I was all alone. A bunch of other people ended up going all the way up here, all the way over here, and then actually back to this center area and thought they discovered a new continent. Whereas the rest of them ended up somehow making it, the rest of them actually made it to Hilder's Meadow, which is over here, and beat me there. So out of the five of us who left, only one carve made it in a reasonable amount of time, the rest of us ended up getting completely and utterly lost. But after getting lost countless times, we eventually realized that all you have to do is look up at the world tree. And as long as you leave from the right place, then it points where you need to go like a finger. People really seem to up their game the further along the path and the deeper into the more dangerous biomes. Here's a really awesome base that was built by one of the crazy builders on the server, Indo. As you get closer to Hilder's Meadow, you'll find a river. And from here you can enter, and this river will take you to the center of town. Whenever you find a dock house like this on the server, it's a communal place. So everything there is pretty much free to use. If there's an empty boat, you can just sail it off and use it. This is the receiving dock house for Hilder's Meadow. So most of the people who've played on this server have come here at some point in their playthrough. The main town of our playthrough approximately takes this area. Although people ended up extending and there's actually houses and structures all the way along here, occupying this entire meadow. 
So that being said, if you come and join the server, just keep in mind that you want to build in areas that have a low instance count. Once the instance count gets to be around 12 or 13,000, players are gonna get laggy in the area and naturally not use it as much. So always keep this in mind, especially if you want to build something people actually use. This area, for example, is a communal tavern that was built by Hrothgar. Hrothgar, another player on the Past the Ashlands server. The town here in Hilder's Meadow has some perimeter protection where the dangerous biomes are for the new players. But if you'll explore, you'll find that people have really found ways to make their place plenty safe. And up north from the meadow, there is a convenient to access mountain to test your metal if you're new to the mountains. All resources and dungeons on this server actually reset and respawn, so you're free to mine and do whatever you want. You can just clear the dungeon and it's gonna reset, don't worry about it. This helps make the difficulty be much more manageable, because it's nowhere near as challenging as it would be on a solo server. Because in this world, you can practice while running into safe houses and areas to keep you rested. <laughs> this is a no portal server, so once you get somewhere, you're there. Some players really took the path concept a lot further than I even imagined, with Hrothgar and some others building out the swamp so that there's a whole path system and areas to smelt and forge iron as the crypts respawn. And then they even built these wicked bridges that are huge, which you can sail under. They didn't do that once, not twice, but actually three times. And then over time, we grew in strength and moved forward through into the plains. We proceeded to make this whole area in the plains and practice building and trying to make it safe without getting too ganked by goblins. And this is where we built the plains communal dock house. And now this path is very well established. It goes on and on and on and on. And this path goes all the way through the plains, all the way down, crossing a bridge over here, down through here, to this awesome section of Black Forest. And surely, if you follow the path all the way down, you'll eventually get there yourself. But be careful though, it may be a path, but that doesn't mean it's totally safe. There's a lot of danger down here. It's better not to go alone. It, it turns out that two other players had beat the path here. This is Indo's base. As far as I know, this is his endgame base, the one prepped for Ashlands. What's really funny is he told me this. Ah uh, yeah, I'm building a Grey Dwarf spawner. Oh, a Grey Dwarf spawner. Yeah, that's quite the Grey Dwarf spawner he's got there, isn't it? And then if you go further down the path, you'll find Hrothgar's Grand Hotel. This place has lots of space, and it seems to be perfectly made for people who want to come here, not build their own base, but be able to go off and explore the Ashlands when it comes out. And there's even plenty of Loxen ready to ride into the dangerous plains. So now is the part where I show you all of the current projects, because as you can see, people have progressed and done their thing, right? Well, what we're doing now is building all sorts of other stuff, and you're welcome to come join. In general, it seems that what people like to do right now is prepare and sort of build their own area for an endgame base, maybe that they can raid the Ashlands from. So you might consider having that experience as well. One quick word of warning, they're going to force the Ashlands to be more island terrain that isn't connected to other biomes, so our world will change. Avoid this region. Some people have already built certain things here, and I'm going to do everything I can to move stuff around and use different worlds to copy and paste the building, so it's gonna be okay. But you will make my job much easier if you avoid building in this area. Because what's going to happen is you'll build a preparation base, but then it's going to get thrust into the ocean when they change the terrain. It's honestly really fun to try and get all of the material necessary to build your base and mine out all the iron, even if you're not doing the boss progression, because a lot of the stuff's already available, right? You still end up having to do a lot of work to build the cool things that you want. 
So now I'll show you some of the building projects that we're working on. When you join the server, you'll get the Discord information, and you'll be able to go to this Missions tab. The Missions tab is where you go for inspiration. There's a lot of sort of, let's call them mini campaigns that I've spawned and filled with monsters to give players something to do. By looking through this tab, you can find missions. These missions are a way to get players to do things together and build things and work on projects with one another. There's many special places on the server that have all of these large rocks spawned here. This allows players to build their own bridges and cross entire regions, connecting entire continents by foot. These building areas usually have a lot of monsters spawned and a combat element added to them, typically requiring players to scout it out first and then go in with some kind of plan to clear out the danger before they get started building. Now, as you saw earlier, we have a swamp kind of close to the town, but it doesn't really have that many crypts in it, even though they respawn. So what we've been working on is accessing this huge swamp over here, which has loads and loads of crypts, so that we can get more iron more easily. And that's where I've created these access points, so we can make bridges crossing over the swamps connecting all of these trees. And if you want to find any of these assets and maps that I've been showing in the video, all you have to do is go to the No Map Maps section, or the Path Planning section. We found that by using these maps and sharing them, it really increases the immersion and gives people fun little projects to work together. And eventually you'll find this file, which shows all of the paths that were made on the server. And we're almost ready for the next series of events to begin. You see, I've got some events planned to keep things interesting. The idea is that we use the easy path that we've created so far, and then we make a more challenging path that we build through the most intense parts of the biome. This way I can send us on winding adventures, putting the path through dangerous areas with pre-spawn monsters that people haven't encountered. Let's just say some of these surprises are kind of intense. <laughs> And this has allowed me to test out combat in Valheim and create all sorts of interesting combat experiences that I can customize as we play them together. And you know, I gotta say, I'm excited for Ashlands. But I've honestly been blown away how fulfilling playing on this server has been. I just am finishing up a break, but I played on it for like two and a half months straight and I had an absolute blast. It was insane getting so into the building and not even caring that much about progression. I personally didn't even kill past motor, but I had so much fun. And that experience has really inspired me to try and figure out how can I make a server that feels sort of alive enough to make building interesting, and at least you can build something and feel like someone might find it at some point or use it in some way. And if all of this sounds interesting to you, if you want to try out this experience of gathering resources, staying alive, and building something on no map, no portals mode, it really is a blast. Especially if you do it together. All you have to do is scroll into the description of this video and join the Poolside Discord server. The Poolside is a community Valheim Discord server. It's run by Splash and Captain Crumbs, who also make videos about Valheim. When you first join, you'll likely need to go up here to the Channels and Roles section to browse channels here. Scroll down and look for the JP Valheim section somewhere near the bottom, and then click on Follow Category. I've added a lot of different chats for different purposes, so this is how you get them to all show up. From here, you'll be able to access the server info channel, where you'll be able to get everything you need to actually log on to the server yourself. If you have any questions or you need any advice about playing on the server, because it can be quite grueling at first, especially if you're doing it alone, then feel free to ask them here in chat. Someone will be around to help you out. If you want to rent a Valheim server, then use my link jpvalheim at zap hosting. And if you want YouTube to show you more Valheim videos, then all you have to do is like this video or any other Valheim video on YouTube. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!